Ah, oh, the 80s. The decade of excess and fully indulging in your favorite guilty pleasures. No two pop culture juggernauts define this era better than the Nintendo Entertainment System and the larger-than-life characters of professional wrestling. And while it's not the first NES title to bring this sport into your living room, pro wrestling was the first one that got it right. And I can't wait to share all the secrets and history you need to become an NES pro wrestling champion. Let's get started. If this is your first time here at the channel, my name is Tyler, and if you love gaming from all generations like we do here at G3, then consider hitting that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. There are many fans who consider the wrestling boom of the mid to late 1980s to be the golden age of professional wrestling. And due to its rising popularity, especially among young people, it's no surprise that developers were trying to capitalize on this market by creating some wrestling titles for the NES. Tag Team Match Muscle and Tag Team Wrestling were the first two games released back in 1986. But these failed to capture the true essence of what fans wanted to experience at home. And when Pro Wrestling released in North America in March of 1987, fans finally had the game they had been waiting for. Computer Gaming World said Pro Wrestling was the only wrestling game that really understands what it is simulating. Pro Wrestling's true roots and development trace back to the mid-1980s in Japan, when the game's sole programmer and designer Masato Masuda worked for the Nintendo R&D 3 development team. There are conflicting reports as to whether Masuda created the game while he was still working for Nintendo, or when he left Nintendo to join Studio Tri, which would later become the Human Corporation, where Masuda would become a legend in the gaming industry when he created Fire Pro Wrestling in 1989. Either way, Masato Masuda was the heart and soul of pro wrestling, which was first released on the Famicom Disk System in October of 1986 in Japan, titled, and I'm probably butchering this, Pure Esu, Famicom Wrestling Association. It's clear to see that Masuda was passionate and well-versed in both Japanese and American wrestling in the 80s, when you look at the six main characters he designed for pro wrestling. Each wrestler has his own detailed stats and backstory along with their own signature moves and limitations, bringing more depth and life into an 8-bit grappler than you would expect. We'll cover each wrestler in great detail here in a bit, but let's take a look at the manual first to get a grasp on pro wrestling's basic gameplay and rules. You have the choice of one or two player gameplay with only singles competition available in this game. The one player game consists of 5 minute matches where you can win by a 3 count pinfall or a 20 second count out. And one obscure way to lose a match is if you stand on the top rope for more than 5 seconds, so don't get caught up there too long. Player 1 begins with a 5th place ranking and his ranking improves with each win, and if your player ever drops to 6th place, the game is over. Once you reach the 1st place ranking, you'll fight in the Video Wrestling Association's title match against King Slender. But if you use King Slender as your character, Giant Panther will take his place in the title match. After winning the VWA Championship, you must defend your title successfully 10 more times to face the game's final boss and the Video Wrestling Federation's champion, the Great Puma. Two-player gameplay is a best 2 out of 3 fall match with no time limit. No championships to win or anything, just bragging rights and relationships to ruin with your friends, especially if they keep kicking you down and don't give you a chance to get up. And you gotta respect the attention to detail Masuda paid in designing this game, cause he tried to make it as close to a real life pro wrestling experience as possible. Notice the two commentators at the top of the screen, and a referee closely following in the action in the ring. And there's even a cameraman outside documenting everything for the viewers at home. Let's discuss the basic movements of each wrestler. Obviously the D-pad allows movement in 8 directions, but if you double tap the D-pad to the left or right you will start running in that direction. While running you can deliver a lariat to your opponent by tapping the A button, or a jumping knee butt by pressing the B button. You can climb to the top rope on each of the two upper corners by tapping up on the D-pad near the corner. Then tap the A button for a flying body attack splash or the B button for a flying knee drop, which actually does a little more damage. Pin your opponent when he's down by tapping the A button, and you can pull your opponent off the map by pressing B. The most basic attack is the punch you simply perform by tapping the B button. And I just find it hilarious that they make this next move sound so much more grand than it actually is, and that is the rolling soul butt. It's a kick, dude. I mean, just chill and call it what it is. The next five moves are grappling moves, meaning that you have to lock arms with your opponent before you immediately apply the button combination to execute it. By pressing a B button during a grapple, you will perform a body slam. 
A backdrop is achieved by tapping the A button along with pressing either left or right on the D-pad. The Brain Buster Suplex is performed by tapping up on the D-pad while pressing the A button, and a pile driver is delivered by tapping down on the D-pad while pressing the A button. A hammer throw is a great move to lead up to one of the running attacks like the lariat or jumping knee butt we discussed earlier. To perform a hammer throw, just tap left or right on the D-pad while pressing B to send them into the ropes. And if someone gives you a hammer throw, you can counter it by tapping A or B once you hit the ropes. You can also counter the flying tacks from the top ropes by timely pressing A or B as well. It's now time to showcase the unforgettable wrestlers that make this game an all-time classic. The first man you can select is Fighter Hayabusa, aka the Invincible Warrior from Okinawa, Japan who is a judo expert and follows a more orthodox style of wrestling. This character appears to emulate Japanese wrestling legend Atonio Inoki, who founded and headlined New Japan Pro Wrestling, who many consider the WWE equivalent of Japan. Hayabusa appears to be your typical babyface wrestler, although his signature move, the back brain kick, feels like more of a heel move since you quickly attack your opponent with a swift kick to the back of the head. But I did find footage of Inoki using this move too. This is a powerful move when executed correctly, but it is tough to master even though all you have to do to perform the move is press the A button when you are standing below an opponent. I feel the best way to time this kick correctly is to hit the A button just slightly after your head goes above the other wrestler's waist. Fighter Hayabusa always seemed generic to me and I typically don't use him or recommend him to newcomers to pro wrestling. Next up is my personal favorite wrestler and likely the most iconic babyface from this game, Starman. The Super Space Traveler dons a full body pink spandex suit with a giant blue star covering his masked face. Many feel Starman was inspired by the Mexican luchador Mil Mascaras, since both are from Mexico and use a flying cross chop as one of their special moves. Starman's flying cross chop is a powerful signature move that is pretty easy to master and can really help you weaken your opponent quickly, especially for newer players. Just tap the A button while you're running to perform a cross chop and it feels like it's a more forgiving move to line up instead of the standard lariat you use with the other wrestlers. Starman's other special move is the somersault kick you can deliver by pressing down and A while grappling. This means that Starman can't perform a pile driver, but the somersault kick is more of a crowd pleaser anyways. The third wrestler is Ken Korn Karn, who the manual calls a living karate tool. This Korean grappler is the oldest of all the wrestlers and definitely feels the most clunky and awkward to control. Karn is based on the 1980s WWF heel Killer Khan, who famously feuded and kayfabe broke Andre the Giant's ankle. The special moves for Karn are the Mongolian Chop and the Karate Kick, performed by tapping B or A on the controller respectively. These moves have an awkward delay to land properly, and I have just never felt comfortable controlling this guy. In my opinion, he's the weakest link in pro wrestling. The ultimate human weapon, Giant Panther, is up next. This blonde and tanned American wrestler is most commonly believed to be parodied after Hulk Hogan, and I can see that to some extent, but I actually think he is more patterned after Kerry Von Erich. Giant Panther was born in Texas, and the Von Erichs were wrestling royalty in the state of Texas during this era. Kerry's physique looks similar to Giant Panther's and Kerry's signature move, the Iron Claw, just so happens to be one of the Giant Panther's special moves as well. I mean, Hulk Hogan was billed from California with a leg drop for a finisher, so I definitely feel that Kerry Von Erich is the real Giant Panther. To perform the Iron Claw, just tap left or right while pressing the A button while grappling. Panther's other special attack, the Headbutt, is accomplished by holding down on the D-pad along with the A button while grappling. Our most mysterious wrestler, the Amazon, may be just as iconic as Starman today. He hails from parts unknown, although I don't feel he is patterned after the Ultimate Warrior. I can't find any real wrestling inspiration for this character. I always just think of the creature from the Black Lagoon when I see this guy. The Amazon is a close second for me to choose as my character behind Starman. He is definitely the most brutal fighter as well, since he draws blood when executing the Piranha Bite and his other signature move, the Outlaw Choke, which you can apply by pressing down on the D-pad while holding the A button while grappling. Now when I was a kid, I always thought the Outlaw Choke was more of a face claw move, but I was way off. What is actually happening is the Amazon gets his opponent in a headlock chokehold and is scratching and gouging the face of his adversary with a fork and hiding it from the referee. And you can see he has a foreign object in his hand here in the manual when performing the hold. I mean, this is heel wrestling at its finest. Last and certainly not least is the VWA champion himself, King Slender. 
This all-American long-haired babyface from the south of the USA is obviously paying tribute to Ric Flair. Even though technically Flair is from North Carolina and King Slender is billed from Georgia. But we'll let it slide. And what's up with King Slender being nicknamed the Cold-Blooded Warrior Junior? Junior? Where's Senior? I have so many questions. No submission moves were programmed in this game, so you can't perform Ric Flair's signature figure four. But King Slender's special move, the backbreaker, looks great and is an easy move to execute by hitting the A button while grappling. King Slender is very powerful and can give you quite an advantage in wearing down opponents fast for quick pinfalls. Now before we discuss some pro tips for the game, I have a quick bit of trivia for you. I'm sure most of you already knew that Pro Wrestling is one of the sports series titles from the NES Black Box Collection. NES Sports Series Tennis, Volleyball, and Baseball all have something in common with Pro Wrestling. And do you know what it is? That's right, they all have the same title screen music, so let's take a listen. And I believe that crowd cheering at the end of each match sounds pretty familiar too. It's now time to say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and train hard to learn all the pro tips you need to master pro wrestling on the NES. Our first pro tip comes as a result of one of the greatest omissions in pro wrestling, and that is the lack of a health meter. This is definitely a frustrating element to this game as it is difficult to tell whether you or your opponent have the true health advantage. There are two alarms you need to listen for to gauge the strength of your wrestler. You hear this alarm first. This sound means your wrestler is starting to weaken but he can still put up a good fight. The second alarm sounds like this. And you are in danger of being pinned for a three count at any time after this so make sure you're on your highest guard. This leads us to our second pro tip which is shared in the official Nintendo Player's Guide, and that is to never use the Brain Buster or Pile Driver early in a match. If you try to use these moves when your opponent is at full health, you won't be able to pull them off, and more than likely they're gonna reverse it and deal a good bit of damage to you. And another tip to take advantage of occurs when performing running attacks like the Flying Cross Chop, Lariat, or Flying Knee Butt. Typically, an opponent will dodge up on the screen to avoid your attacks. So if you try to land these moves while the opponent is in the top of the ring, then he doesn't have anywhere to go. I mean, the computer will eventually smarten up to this strategy, but it can really give you an edge if you get in a tight spot. Make sure you keep the referee's position in mind. Sometimes the ref likes to keep his distance from the wrestlers. So if you cover your opponent for a pin when he's far away, the ref won't start counting until he can lie on the mat next to you. That half second or so it takes the ref to make it over there is critical, especially in your later title defense matches. It's now time to reveal the tips that I feel are the most critical to defeating pro wrestling, and that is mastering fighting outside the ring to win by a 20 second count out. To get your opponent outside the ring, you can use a body slam or a brain buster suplex when near the left or right edges of the ring. Take two or three seconds to get the 20 count started, then hold down the A button and double tap the D-pad in the direction of your downed opponent to land an outside plunger attack. Once they get up or when you pull them up, immediately slam them into the railing with a hammer throw. Make your way back into the ring at this time and wait for the count out to win the match. Now it takes a few tries to get the timing of the moves just right to pull off a count out, but it is essential to winning the last two title defenses and even more important to defeat the Great Puma, who I have never been able to cleanly pin for a three count. The Great Puma, who the manual dubs the perfect wrestler, makes use of all the special moves of the other wrestlers, and is extremely powerful. He appears to be based off the Japanese wrestler named Tiger Mask. If you're trying to defeat him for the first time, don't even attempt to do it by pinfall. I feel it's quite an accomplishment just to beat him by count out, and proudly hold both the VWA and VWF titles. Pro Wrestling's legacy has transcended the NES era, and it's still referenced in pop culture today, but by far the most common nod to the game on the internet is the flub Japanese to English translation, a winner is you phrase seen after every match you win. It's even made its way into a few other games like Bowser's Inside Story. Pro Wrestling is the 21st best-selling NES game of all time at 2.4 million copies and it's left a lasting impression on critics with Game Informer naming Pro Wrestling the 79th best game of all time in 2001. Please share your favorite memories and secrets you have about Pro Wrestling in the comments below. 
please give this video a like and i want to give a special shout out to patrick mccabe for finding mullet boy first once again in our last video you're becoming a pro at this patrick till next time guys g3 out